Welcome to the ultimate crowdsourced personal finance show. This is your Friday Roundup. You're listening to Choose FI Radio. The blueprint for financial independence lives here. If you're looking to unlock the secrets to financial independence and early retirement, you're in the right place. Stay tuned and join a community of like-minded people who are getting off the hamster wheel and taking control of their lives in the pursuit of financial independence. Choose FI, your home for financial independence online. Okay, guys, congratulations. You have made it to the weekend, and this is your Friday Roundup. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to this episode, and to help me with this, I have my co-host Brad here with me today. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Jonathan, I am doing quite well. Yeah, we've got a balmy spring-like weather here in Richmond. It's crazy. It's been like 70 degrees the last couple days, so yeah, just been outside playing basketball with my girls and running around and just kind of enjoying the weather. How about you? So balmy, that's a good thing, right? I thought I'd say so for, <laughs> for January, right, man? It was uh, it was negative three like ten days ago, and it I think it hit seventy one yesterday. So yeah, a seventy four degree swing in ten days. That's pretty cool. Yeah, not bad. Spring is coming. It's I'm really looking forward to getting to. What is the official the official deadline for when winter ends and spring begins? Is it March twentieth? I think it's yeah, March twentieth, twenty first, something like that. Very nice. Now, I know you got family in town and your daughter is having her tonsils removed tomorrow. Is that right? Yeah, yeah unfortunately, little Molly has her tonsils coming out. So, yeah, it's kind of a bummer, but she really, really needs a surgery. So, uh, yeah, we're hoping, obviously, after a you know pretty annoying recovery that all is well in the world and she doesn't have the problems that she's been dealing with the last couple of years. So it's one of those kind of bittersweet things as, as a parent. Not, maybe bittersweet is the wrong word, but it's tough as a parent to see your kid have to go into surgery, but we know it's for the best. So luckily we have Laura's parents who came into town to, you know, just help around the house, help with Molly. And yeah, it's really wonderful to have that support. Well, when you get back in town, we'll have to get together and do a cookout or maybe a board game night. I know that that is something that we've been promising ever since we got back from camp Fi, and unfortunately it is probably gonna be in our week or two before we can make it happen. But the choose FI Richmond community we are absolutely committed to making this meetup happen. Yeah, no, I hear you. And I think a board game night is is a good idea. I think we're going to try to do better things with our Richmond local group here, we, as opposed to it just being like, hey, let's meet up all at a brewery or something and stand around and talk for an hour, which is great, right, in and of itself. But in a perfect world, we can maybe be the model for these local groups across the country and across the world. And what I've also come to the conclusion is, all 60 of us don't need to be included or there at every single one. Like I, part of me said like, Oh, let's make it these big events. But you know, if it's just five people sitting around playing board games for three hours, that's pretty darn cool. That's then the community that you and I have been talking about. So I think not that our sites are lower. I think it's quite the contrary, but they're just different. You know, like we need to figure out a way to make this work for as a community. So, uh, yeah, I think the board game night is, is step number one. Well, you know, as much as I would like to be a model for everybody else, I'm afraid that's already been taken away from us. I mean, other local communities are just crushing it. I mean, we just saw that in Austin, they had a meetup where 18 people just kind of met for the first time to kind of swap stories and figure out where to go from there. We got a voicemail that I'm going to play in a few minutes here, just illustrating kind of what the power of these local communities are. And this thing is really taking off. I mean, this is still early days. It's not like this is the imagine what this will look like five years from now. And all that really needed to happen was for there to be a way for us to get past the meet and greet and into sharing community, sharing your lives with a group of like minded individuals. And it changes everything. You go from being on this lonely path where you're fighting the constant wave, the constant marketing machine that is our culture, and you're just focusing on these value-added activities with the set of new friends and family. Yeah, no, I totally hear you. And obviously, we talk about the local groups and community over and over again. So uh, yeah, I don't need to spend all that much more time today talking about it. But suffice to say, it's an important part of what we're putting together here. So as always, chooseify.com forward slash local if you want to join a local group in your area. And we think it has big potential to positively impact lives 
for years to come. So really, really cool stuff. So Brad, I thought we could take a few minutes and go back to your conversation from last week, talking about how you had just realized that you enjoy DIY projects, because it reminded me of a conversation that I actually had with my mom over the last couple of weeks. And we were talking about the fact that I had changed out this electrical outlet and she's saying, wow, you and your brothers, you're all so handy. You can do all this DIY stuff. Where did you get it from? Because your dad just has no interest in it. And as I was talking to her and kind of sifting through that, I told her, I'm not a DIY guy. I'm not that handy. But what I am able to do is put a search into YouTube. That's literally the only difference between someone that's handy and someone that's not handy is are you willing to take two minutes and put your question, how do I fix fill in the blank into YouTube? And to be fair, this isn't something that you had access to like five or 10 years ago. So you could have this excuse up to the point that you just didn't naturally know how to fix stuff. But now it's Everything that could possibly be fixed on a home or in your local yard has been documented to perfection with perfect lighting, you know, in a five minute video clip that you can access at will. And I just think that that is a different way of looking at the problem. And it reminded me of what you were talking about last week. Yeah, it really is an amazing feeling, I have to say. And it really transcends just the money that you're saving. There's just this satisfaction of being able to undertake this project. And like you said, it's really, none of these things are that hard at their core. I mean, you just search on YouTube, you find the exact video for the exact problem or issue you have, and you study it. You go to Home Depot, you buy the item that you need to repair, and you just do it. I know that sounds kind of silly, but I was someone who would have just hired someone. That was a great shame. I mean, it was ridiculous. We couldn't do anything, quote unquote, couldn't, right? which means wouldn't or didn't take the effort to do it. Now, like I said last week, I'm emboldened to fix other things. So just since last week's roundup when we recorded, we've undertaken two other projects. I mentioned, I think, on my my stove, one of the heating elements busted. So we literally bought the part from GE or had it shipped from Amazon. And I just did it in the hour before recording this, Jonathan. Like my father-in-law was here to help. So it was maybe a 15 minute fix. And that probably saved us a couple hundred dollars. It really, it was kind of fun. And when you're done with it, the thing works. Again, as silly as that sounds, there is such satisfaction in that. We also, and this is like Laura and I have ultra low expectations when it comes to our house in general. We're like, maybe this is our being valueous or whatever, but our door in the master bathroom never locked. We lived here for 13 years. The thing just never locked. I never investigated why coming off my last week's doorknob changing out success. I'm like, you know what? I can fix this thing. I changed out the doorknob, still didn't work. And I realized the door wasn't hitting right on the strike plate. It's called on the inside of the door frame. So what did I do? I unscrewed the strike plate. I moved it up an eighth of an inch. The door locks now. And it was like, holy cow, this is Brad Barrett, who would have never done anything before, is now not only fixing things, but is coming up with fairly novel ways to do it in ways that I normally would not have even thought. It expands your mind. It It's just great all around. And to your point, people aren't DIYers or not. They're just people who want to learn and people who can go on YouTube and search something and fix it. Even two people that I know that I consider really great at this, which are Carl from 1500 Days and Nate from Frugal Woods, like they both have said, we learned everything from YouTube. We were just willing to learn. That's just such a good outlook on life in general. I think that's larger than just the DIY or not on your house. It's just a good way to approach life is I am willing to learn. I can learn anything. And you have the whole world at your fingertips on YouTube or Google. This is the best time to be alive because you can find anything in the world in 10 seconds. That's really, truly amazing. Yeah. If it takes 11 seconds, you're not being efficient enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. But we also, we got a uh, an email. I got an email from Tinian who goes by Captain DIY. He wanted to give kudos to Brad and Laura for their DIY successes. And he said, doesn't it feel amazing to fix something yourself, especially when you go into the project feeling less than confident? That's it in a nutshell. It's, uh, it's really cool. And again, like now we have a fourth project and I thought I could fix this thing in five minutes and it's proving a little more difficult. And whereas I normally would have given up now I'm going to call the manufacturer when we get off the phone and figure out, Hey, how can I do this? And it's a totally different mindset. So it's really, really cool. 
Awesome, man. Well, my stovetop is still sitting there like a giant paperweight and it has an electronic computer board on the inside. So I have called the repair company on that one, but I did get a credit card tip from somebody. So I purchased this on the credit card and Tien reminded me to check and see if the credit card I used to purchase that stovetop has an extended warranty because they might help you out with some of the expenses. And I had forgotten about that. I don't know if it will apply, but I do know that there are many credit cards that offer extended warranties on various purchases. So make sure you know all the benefits of whatever you're using anytime you make a large purchase. That's a really good call. Yeah, speaking of credit cards, we actually just booked our spring break travel using rewards points, which is really cool. As everyone knows out there, hopefully by now, I I love using my rewards points to travel for nearly free. It doesn't sound like the most amazing spring break trip, but for us, this is the absolute perfect trip. We're going to actually see uh, Greenville, South Carolina and Roanoke, Virginia, which are like two really up and coming cities with cool brewery scene, lots of hikes within a half hour on every direction, essentially. And just a neat time. And of course, my family loves our swimming. So we got hotels that have indoor heated pools. That's just like a nice spring break trip for us. And we were able to use Starwood points in Roanoke. And it's only 4,000 points per night for this really nice looking hotel in a Sheridan hotel. And then in Greenville, we're actually using some of our Capital One Venture and Spark Miles points. So those are basically just to offset the expense. And I think we didn't have enough Capital One points to offset the entirety, but the whole week long trip is going to be about 100 or $150, which is not a bad deal at all. I love that. And to be honest with you, I haven't made any plans for spring break because for the last several years, it was just known that you weren't going to be able to get that particular week off, at least with my profession, uh, which was unfortunate because my wife always had it off. But this year, I might be in a slightly different situation. And if you're not going to be here, that means I'm not recording either. So I'll have to come up with a plan. But that reminds me, Brad, I think what we need to do, we need to do an updated travel rewards episode. So we did in episode nine, we kind of did our gateway episode for travel rewards, but some things have changed going into 2018. And I think it, it would be probably useful for our audience once a year to maybe take a Friday episode and walk through any changes that have landed over the last 12 months and kind of what our plan is going forward. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a very smart plan. And it's funny, you must be reading Laura's mind, actually, because uh, one of the things she wanted me to email you about this week was, hey, you guys need a 2018 update for travel rewards. So I didn't even mention that to you before. But yeah, it's, she'll be very happy to hear that. Nice score. Also, you gave me a tip the other day that I think we should talk about on the show. This is just kind of a catch all for things that we've mentioned but haven't followed up on that you and Laura sat down and started planning out your legacy binder. And you mentioned to me a resource that I have researched and I've decided to go all in on called, I think it's FidSafe or Fidelity Safe. Could you talk to us a little bit about what your experience with Laura creating that binder was and then also how you use this software from Fidelity to store all that information? Sure. We are very much still in process, so I cannot speak as like an expert here on, you know, we're done with this by any means. So yeah, we both can talk about it certainly, but yeah, someone mentioned in the Facebook group about legacy binders. And then I saw a link to this FidSafe. It might've actually been on a budgets or sexy article about legacy binders, but yeah, this, this website is called FidSafe.com. So F I D safe.com. And it's, uh, as I'm literally at the site right now, it's a secure free document storage from Fidelity Investments. So it is like the highest level security and they have just like a neat little repository where you can just upload all the documents that, that you have in your life. I mean, and they, they give you checklists on precisely what you need and you just literally check them off and you have them set into different file folders in this storage area and you can set it up. So you have different access accounts. I think even potentially like upon your death, some people get access and things like that. Don't quote me on that. I'm not hundred percent sure, but it's, it's very intuitive and we've started uploading some documents there. And we've also started with, they have the functionality where you can add notes. So basically you would put in instructions and I've just really started to think about this kind of bizarre scenario, you know, the hit by a bus scenario, right? Which is 
I run all of our finances. Obviously, Laura is extraordinarily capable. She's a CPA, but just the way that it fell, I run all this stuff. And I also run three different businesses. And I think about all the things that I do on a monthly basis, even just doing the financial statements and where to log in and how to pay the credit cards and just little random things like how to transfer money into our checking account. I don't have documentation for this. So basically what I've done is put literally into my to-do list for February 1st to start documenting every single thing I do that month that would need to be done by someone else if I got hit by the proverbial bus. I just figured start in the beginning of a month and if it's all documented, sure, it's going to be a pain in the butt. There's no question about it. Just like it was a pain in the butt when I had to move all my account passwords to LastPass. That took me a long time and it was pretty frustrating, but now that it's done, it's this wonderful store of all my passwords and they're dramatically safer than they were previously. That was time well spent. Was it a daunting project? Yeah, you bet it was. Similar to this. This is a daunting project to basically document my entire life. But you know what? Is that going to provide me peace of mind and my family peace of mind in case I do get hit by that bus? You bet. So I think it is well worth the time. And it's long overdue, frankly. It's kind of ridiculous that I that I never did this before. But now it'll be all set. And yeah, I'm really, really honestly looking forward to it in a weird kind of way. Yeah. And you telling me about this was the final kick in the rear I needed to start taking action on it myself. And so I set up two term life insurance policies, $500,000 each, 20 year terms with SBLI. I got it for roughly $20 a month uh, for each of us. And then I have started connecting those to the FID safe that we just mentioned. There'll be a link to that in the show notes. And then on top of that, because now I had some momentum under my belt, I went ahead and called Mutual Assurance. It's an insurance company in Virginia. I don't think everybody can get access to this, but if you're fortunate enough to be able to get into the program, Brad, my understanding is their rates are just absurdly low. I I realized that my insurance company, which was Safeco, uh, had been slowly creeping my bill up. And so when I started, it was like $60 a month, but now it has gone up over the last four years to 90 bucks a month. It's just been creeping up over time. That's a lot of money. And I know I was kind of incredulous when you posted that on the Richmond Choose FI Facebook group. Because I mean, that's $1,100 a year for homeowners insurance on just a regular house in Richmond, Virginia. I think I was paying it was somewhere around $500. For some reason, four fifty six in my mind, but it might have been slightly more than that. And I was unhappy with that and moved to mutual insurance. And I'm going to save fairly significantly. So you know, it's not a beat yourself up, Jonathan type scenario. It's just, you know, just like anything, this is a lesson, which is don't let things creep. We all know we should look at our insurance policies every couple of years and do an analysis and try to get some quotes. But honestly, most of us don't do it because it's a hassle. Jonathan, I mean, you should put it in. Well, maybe now that you're with mutual insurance, it, it'll be different, but otherwise put it in to doist for every two years, Right. March 1st of every two years, you just set up that recurring thing and you get a quote on your auto insurance and your homeowner's insurance and whatever else, boom, then it's just done. Like that, that's how I've set up my life at this point, which is putting those recurring tasks in my to do a step. And it just makes life a lot easier. And it, it helps with that overwhelm of, oh, I know I should do it, but invariably you don't. We keep going back to this well of just try to be a little bit better every single day. And that's what I loved about the episode this past Monday was that constant process. You watched Vincent just implement these different ideas one at a time. And and like you're working for, for these long stretches with no progress and you finally get that first drop of water and then it starts flowing a little bit more, a little bit more. And then suddenly it's overflowing. And at that point you can't get in the way of your own success. It seems like all these different topics are spread all over the map. We're talking about these financial aspects, all these tools we have available. We spend time talking about travel rewards and optimizing your credit cards. In a second, I'd love to start talking to you about health and wellness and how I'd like to focus on the Skinny Waste Fat Wallet program again for 2018. And these things are all over the map, but you realize what ties them all together is that when I woke up today, I just wanted to be a little bit better than yesterday. Yeah, I love that. I absolutely love that. And and yeah, that's the way I'm approaching my life as well. And and it's funny, this is choose FI, right? Financial independence. But at this point, we don't spend 90%, 80%, even 
60% of our time talking about the nuts and bolts of finance because it really is this entire way of life. It's just try to get a little bit better. And and we do say it a lot, but it, it is really important. And it's it's cool to see Vincent talk about a lot of these items that we've talked about over and over again. He talked about relationships. Relationships make the world go round, I think was his quote. And just being open to people and trying to help. He described how in a past life, essentially, he was like a stereotypical negative New Yorker who was just not viewing the world through an abundance mindset. It was it was truly that scarcity mindset of if I don't get it, somebody else is. So therefore, I've got to beat everybody else. He really changed 180 degrees to being all about giving and all about connecting and just trying to help people every single day and make those connections. I think half of his workday, he said, is is just connecting with people. You can just tell when you speak with him. Jonathan, you and I stood there for maybe 40 minutes chatting with him at FinCon, and he was just a nice, chill guy. It was a wonderful conversation. People kept coming up to him and chatting with him, and it was just like a good time. You didn't sense any other motivations or like he was looking to go somewhere else or speak with someone else or find someone better. Like so many times when you're at those conferences, you're standing around and people are scanning the room and trying to find that big star to talk to. Like Vincent was just there and he was so present. That's probably the most succinct way to put it. And what I've been looking for here in the last minute is he was so present. You can just tell he wants to connect. And I know him through another Facebook group and he's become the guy there for financial advice just because he's so incredibly helpful. He's just there constantly and he's not asking for anything. And good things come from that. You know, he quoted to us that he knows Seth Godin and I guess Seth put a a blurb on his book, which is unheard of. He met Tim Ferriss. These things don't just happen to random people. You know, he has put in the time and made connections and that stuff really bears dividends for years. Yeah, I, you know, I think that he has designed his life in a way to foster relationships and not in the spammy way that you were referring to a second ago, but really looking into how are these relationships, these bonds formed over time and then just committing himself to a daily practice that positions himself to be able to make those relationships. I was blown away. I had met him at FinCon. We had a great talk. I basically left FinCon to go to Cape Town, South Africa. I'm on the plane or actually in Cape Town and I get a message from him saying, hey, just wanted to check and see how the trip was and whether or not, you know, basically, did you have a good time? Get there safely, all that sort of thing. Who does that? You never get messages like that. It was so unusual to get just a simple follow up with no additional ass down at the bottom. I literally was taken aback. And I think that if you read his book, you realize that this isn't an accident. This is something that he has built into his daily practice. And it makes it more impressive for it because it's so rare. So, Jonathan, one thing that definitely struck me from the interview with Vincent was was his relationship with his dad and how that has changed. He basically said, like, for his entire life, he had this resentment based on what he didn't get and maybe what he saw his brother get in life. And and it was just this negative attitude. He basically said like his dad led him to two of these major inflection points in his life. And his dad sounded like a pretty resourceful guy and a pretty intelligent guy with with these two essential pivotal moments, which were, hey, why don't you take a photography class? And then the second advice was you cannot just keep doing the same thing because you're comfortable which is what so many millions of us do. We get just locked in by the inertia and locked in by the paycheck and we don't step out and start our own business, which is what what they talked about. That was just really these like lightning bolt moments for Vincent. And what was amazing was to see the way that he changed his outlook on his dad and his relationship with his dad, which I think he said, quote, I changed the way I looked at him not the way he responded to me. So it was just by having this subtle shift in outlook, really it changes your entire worldview. And that's what's so remarkable. You know, on this podcast, I talk about how I'm trying to be better as a person and be happier and and all this stuff, but I still have my default state, my old default state where 
I get grumpy or I complain about things or whatever, but at least now I'm in this state where I'm conscious of these issues. Whereas previously I was just completely unconscious to it. I was just complaining and that was just how I lived. But now at least I'm conscious of it and it helps me take a step back and say, Hey, Bozo, this is just your brain tricking you. And if you would just put a smile on and forget it, everything would be better because literally your entire world changes with your outlook. This is not like some la-di-da, woo-woo type stuff. This is real. When you just change your outlook, it changes everything. And that is what Vincent did. And it changed his entire life. And we talked about that a couple of minutes ago with his abundance versus scarcity mindset and how he went from a position where he thought everything was competition to now he goes out of his way to help people. These couple of little changes in his life have changed everything. Yeah, there were so many different themes that came through when he was sharing his, his basically his entire story, but his childhood up through young adult. This was the first time that we've had someone come on the show and basically said, look, I was a horrible person. I was a thief. I was morally bankrupt. You know, I was the epitome of selfishness, which comes through with some of these other attributes that he laid out. And this chip that was on his shoulder the entire time carried over into the way that he interacted with everyone around him. He didn't use these words, but I'm going to, I can see the overlap there. So I'm going to bounce this off you as well. It felt like gratitude when it came into his life, maybe as a result of getting his finances under the control, maybe as a result of separating himself a little bit farther from the hamster wheel. But when he got to a place where he started becoming grateful for the relationships that he actually did have with his family, everything about his life got better. And it'd be interesting to kind of tease out the chicken or the egg situation there. Was it the fact that he was grateful that then allowed him to have the success that he had? Or was it the fact that he was able to get some space between the daily grind, between the nine to five, between the overwhelming pressure of life's issues that just pile up one at a time? And I don't know if I can sift through that for him right here on the spot, but certainly as both of those became more focused and more clear, his life got better. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and that, is, that is hard to know, but I think he, he kind of teased it out a little bit when he said, it's so easy when you don't need to spend much to live. That was a loose quote. And he said, it just, it gives you options in life. And I think this was, we didn't really overtly talk about financial independence. We could have spent an entire extra episode on that with Vincent, certainly. But he is living a fi life. He cut down all of his debt, right? Like they made this this 10 year plan to pay off the debt. And by the sounds of it, they accomplished that in just a few short years. When you don't have that much in the way of life expenses, everything is easier. And then you can focus on these higher level things. You can focus on connection. You can focus on getting a little bit better, constantly growing. I think that was one thing he said, always be better than the day before. How cool is that? That's our aggregation of marginal gains. These are all the same themes that we're talking about here at Choose a Five. This is the path to be a better person. When you pursue Phi, when you're not so caught up in needing that job every second of the day and working overtime to get a bigger bonus and all this other nonsense about because you're in the hamster wheel, right? And you need all that money to just pay off your monthly expenses. When you cut everything down, you have freedom. And Jonathan, you are the perfect case in point, right? With your FFLC recently, you paid off your debt, you cut your expenses as low as you possibly could. And you have options now. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. It certainly is. You know, it goes back to that water spout episode that we talked about earlier. When I was paying off my student loans, every two weeks I would go and I would immediately send that paycheck, every extra penny I could to them. And it just doesn't feel like you're making any progress. You see the balance go down, but is anything really happening? You still have six figures of student loan debt left. And then slowly now, I remember in, in my life when my student loan debt dropped underneath six figures and now it was, you know, $98,000 of student loans remaining, you know, what a big moment that was and said, okay, we're making progress now, just three more years. We just kept at it over and over again, just not giving up. And then at some point it switches. And now the margin that you've built in your life is giving you so much freedom and flexibility to pursue these other avenues. And I think for me, one of the things, this, this common thread, this red X moment, I cannot stress to you what a powerful concept that is. So in the past, in my working life, 
it was a known entity that you could either have Christmas or Thanksgiving off, but not both. You're going to be working one of those. And even if you put in the request to get one off, it's not a guarantee that you get it off. It's based on seniority. It's based on availability. You know, you could very easily be turned down, especially if you need some extra days on either side. But the power of being in control of your own schedule and being able to say, you know what, this month I'm shutting off. This month is for my family. And having the option to do that, what a privilege and what an aspirational goal. Yeah, I love that beautiful day rule that he talked about. That's it. You know, we we are always talking about just ways to improve your life. And there's one of them. They homeschool their kids and they have this beautiful day rule where if it's nice and gorgeous outside in Pittsburgh, they go outside and explore and have fun as a family. It does not get any better than that. It's just obvious that his kids are going to look back someday and say, wow, how fortunate were we to have mom and dad home with us where we could do that. We could go out and explore. We could build businesses like they're doing. I mean, like what a cool thing. It's amazing. Again, when you see these, these stories run through different episodes, like Brandon Pierce, that was another example that almost mimics what Vincent was talking about, which is Brandon's kids are there learning and building businesses and, and doing all sorts of things because they have that freedom because their parents have that freedom. So you're not just impacting yourself positively. It's your entire family. And that's just a cool, cool thing. And he was so motivated. I mean, you, you heard it come through and I think it's worth addressing for our community. I think many people struggle with this. What am I going to retire to? A lot of us know that, you know, we may or may not like our jobs. Many people are discontent with their jobs, but their fear is, what's waiting for me on the other side? Am I just going to be bored? What am I going to do with that time? And to me, I don't understand that. I can't relate to that because I can never imagine not having something to do because I'm so focused on exploring things that I get very excited about, turning hobbies into businesses, finding new hobbies. I mean, I collect, they're collectibles. You know, I don't do baseball cards. I collect hobbies. Then I spend hours and weeks and months learning new skills on, on YouTube. I saw that with him as well. And once you were able to get that space in your life, it's just what is the next skill set you're going to add on? And over time, you you stack these together. You do the talent stack that we've talked about before. And when an opportunity presents itself, you're prepared for it. It's not a question of what are you going to do, but how much can you fit in to a schedule that you had no idea how busy it was going to be once you left your nine to five? Yeah, the whole retire early thing is is really kind of farcical, frankly. And and that's what you're what you're kind of alluding to there. Like nobody that I know, maybe with the exception of Justin from Root of Good, right? Like with his his pictures of him sitting in in the hammock, you know, he revels in that obviously. And <laughs> and I'm saying this very good naturedly, obviously. He but, used to be able to rub it in way more. He would send those pictures on Twitter. He would tag me in them every single time <laughs> he took a day off. I was stuck at my nine to five as I was getting them on like on a balmy day, right? And I was just loathing him. But now he can be friends again uh, because, yeah, I just sent him one right back. (laughs) But right. I mean, everybody else that I know, and I'm sure Justin does many things. So I'm not picking on Justin in any way, shape or form. But every single person I know who's at Fi is busier than they've ever been. And not in the, the ridiculous, oh, I'm busy type of way, but in actually adding value to their lives, adding value to the world, doing things that they want to do. I don't know anyone that is at Phi or near Phi or has any level of Phi who is sitting around doing nothing, watching Grey's Anatomy reruns, to quote Jonathan. That just doesn't happen. It's no, I mean, you needed to be a pretty remarkable person to reach Phi decades ahead of everybody else. And that type of ingenuity and spirit is going to pass on in your post Phi life. And you're going to do so many things that you never dreamed of because you didn't have the time. Jonathan, like you just said, you can learn anything in the world on YouTube. If I had a hundred hours in a day, I could fill them. I barely have time. And this sounds ridiculous. I barely have time to do all the things that I want to every single day, meditate and, you know, learn new things and read books. I feel like I'm constantly quote busy. And I don't, again, don't mean that in the, Oh, look at me, humble brag type way. Like I'm just busy and I'd love to have more time. So to imagine that you would ever be bored or sit around doing nothing in a post fi life is just absolutely laughable in my opinion. If that's one of your worries, which is fair, like I, I don't, when I say laughable, I don't mean, oh, it's a preposterous thought because lots of us have that thought. But I assure you, once you get on the other side, you are going to just be enamored with how many choices you have. It's going to be really, really remarkable. So 
in my opinion, based on where I'm sitting, I would not worry about that. There is a world of things to learn, a world of things to do and explore. And now you have the time and resources to do it. And, and good things will come from that. You know, I think we need to set up an award for somebody that is truly retired, like the Internet Retirement Police Award. That needs to be, be a thing at the Fi Festival, where each year we honor someone that has truly made an effort to doing nothing on the backside of Fi. I think it's going to be way harder than you can imagine, because after that, then they'll have won the award, which puts them right back in the running. So... You know, I, I just I don't know anybody personally that's doing absolutely nothing. Either they're pursuing a hobby, sport, passion, they're traveling the world, they're creating a business, they're teaching, volunteering, giving back. There's just so many options. What are you going to do? Get excited about the possibilities. Don't limit yourself with the scary idea that because you can't figure it out right away, you're not even going to try to pursue FI. All right, guys, so you know how we mentioned Skinny Waste Fat Wallet earlier in the episode? We are going to be kicking off next week the Skinny Waste Fat Wallet 2018 challenge. This is going to be hosted by our Facebook thread. We're going to be piloting this program, but basically we're going to be taking advantage of the psychological aspects and the benefits of having a community of people that are committed to being 1% better every single day in every aspect of their life. And we're going to channel that to get in the best shape of our life going into 2018. We're going to start this program in our Facebook group. At some point, we might move it to some form of content on the choose FI website, but for right now it'll stay on the Facebook group. But basically once a week on Thursday, we're going to have a common thread where you can post your questions about what is the one change that you can make this week to increase your level of fitness or the exercise or the dietary technique, whatever it is, what we're going to try and do. I know for a fact that in this group, we have this random assortment, maybe hundreds, if not thousands of people that would identify as dietitians, fitness experts, CrossFit gurus, bodybuilders, vegetarians, vegans, and together, hopefully we can suck the knowledge out of this hive mind and figure out what is the one thing that we can do each day, each week to get a little bit better in this particular aspect of our life and spend the remainder of the summer and the remainder of 2018 being in the best shape of our lives. This could be your year. And frankly, it just starts because you are willing to learn everything that you don't know that you don't know. And I think the motivational aspect of getting that continuity in the group will have infinitely more success than the $1,000 program that you decided not to buy over Black Friday. Yeah, I know our one thing post on Friday. I mean, that provides me inspiration. I know Laura and I sit there on Friday and Saturday going through that post and just kind of reading everything. And it really just makes you excited for the community and it makes you excited to make changes. So I know health and fitness are big for you in 2018. They're big for me, certainly. So this can only benefit the community to have experts chime in and, and help us all out. And obviously there's a world of information out there and people will agree, disagree, et cetera. But I think we're all moving towards a goal just to be healthier. And like you said, to do it with that fat wallet, right? We're not obviously looking to break the bank, but we're trying to do things in the most intelligent, efficient manner we can. And health and fitness are major tenants of, of living a fi life. And maybe there's a way that we could even turn that the content that we pull from this ongoing thread, maybe there'll be a way to even turn that into an episode, maybe towards the end of the summer, we can talk about what works, what didn't work, what we actually ended up implementing in our own lives and where we see this going into the future. But for me, it was such a powerful thought that I don't need to be world class today. I just need to be a little bit better than I was yesterday. And today is a fresh start. And if I position myself to get access to good information, I'm making it easier to be just a little bit improved. So that's encouraging for me. And I hope it is for you. And I hope you'll join us as we launch the Skinny Ways Fat Wallet 2018 pilot program. The first post is going to go out next Thursday in the Facebook group. If you want to join the group, you can just go to choosefi.com slash Facebook. That will take you directly to the page. Okay, well, I think we should go ahead and play a couple voicemails. Uh, this first voicemail that I want to play is from Kelsa, and she wanted to share her experience with the local group and really talk about how that community aspect is having an impact on her own life, even though she's a very financially savvy person. Hi, Jonathan and Brad. My name is Kelsa, and I wanted to leave you this voicemail to, first of all, say thank you for the wonderful community you've created with Choose FI. I'm one of the admins for the Choose FI Phoenix group, and while we've only been a community since September, and although Choose FI has been a part of my life for just less than a year, the impact it's had on my life has been incredible. 
See, I've been a financial coach for over 10 years now, and I can honestly say that I have the best clients. I have the privilege of coaching hardworking, driven, positive, and wonderful people every day. And they all just so happen to be in debt or out of control with their spending or without a budget, you name it. But 10 years ago, I said I found my passion and I still feel that way today. And I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. So in that way, I'm lucky because I get to work toward my FI while loving what I do every day. But I think I was looking for a group of people like the Choose FI community without even realizing it. If I compare myself to some of my clients, financially, my husband and I are in a much better situation. And it's a situation I should feel really proud of. And we do. We have no debt. We save aggressively. We live life intentionally or so we try. And we're working toward FI. And yet we certainly felt a little alone on this island of how we think and manage our money. I was looking for people who are better than me with their money, people who could challenge me, inspire me, and give me something to work toward, people who cared about their finances more than I care about ours, because every day I get to push people to learn more, care more, and become more engaged in their finances. And while I am honored to do that, it has been remarkable to see just how we needed that little push ourselves. And your community has done just that. As a result, my husband and I have kicked up our savings rate. We leaned out a couple more expenses and we've received some great referrals from our local group for work we wanted done on our house. So thank you for all the work you're doing and giving us a community of people where we feel at home. On another note, I'd like to invite one of you or both of you to be guests on our podcast, The Saver and the Spender. Our followers would really benefit from hearing more about the Choose FI concept from you. I try to talk about it with people, and I fear I may be failing miserably at how I explain it. So we'd love to have you to spread this wonderful message. If that's something you're interested in, please drop me a note back and let me know. Finally, if you ever see the need to interview someone who has built a really successful business around helping people better manage their money, I would love to be a guest on your podcast. The need for financial coaches is huge, but not just any financial coach. I think there's a bigger need for people who have a passion for helping others. And I think the Choose FI community is full of those types of people. And financial coaching could be a lucrative side hustle or full-time gig for those pursuing FI. And our world could become a better place because there would be a lot less people feeling stress over everyday financial challenges. Like I said earlier, I feel blessed because I get to help people every day. I love what I do and I'm pursuing FI. So it feels like a really perfect scenario. I hope you'll reach out to me if either of these sound like an idea you'd be interested in. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this long voicemail. And thank you again for all of the amazing, amazing work you're doing to encourage financial independence and for giving us the little push that we needed. I look forward to many more episodes of your podcast and many more meetups here in Phoenix. Bye, guys. Yeah, I love this voicemail. Thank you so much for the invite to come on your podcast. Of course, Brad and myself would both love to be a part of your show in any way that we can and help any way that we can. Also, with respect to the side hustle that you were mentioning, the financial coaching, I love that as well. In fact, I know there's several people in our community that are exploring whether or not that would be a viable model. Juan from Finance Clever out of Raleigh, North Carolina, is looking into that and has maybe started to do a little bit of it. Also, uh, William McVeigh, who is one of the moderators on our Facebook group, is looking into basically being a fire coach and he is looking for some additional information on that also. So I think there is some real interest from people in our community looking to help people one-on-one. I'd love to find out a little bit more about the training requirements, the legal requirements to cover yourself if you're offering financial advice, how that differentiates or how that's differentiated from being a CFP. So I think all of those are questions that we would like to have answered. And it sounds like you would be the perfect person to talk about it. So maybe that will present an opportunity and we'll certainly reach back out to you. Yeah, Brad, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, Kelsa, thank you so much for the voicemail, certainly. And thanks for being an admin of the local group there in Phoenix. I mean, it sounds like you're getting a ton of benefit just from the Choose of I community generally. And then from the local community, you said you've already save some money based on some contractors and some tips you've gotten. And also this entire community has given you that challenge and inspiration to work towards something and, and that little push. Sometimes it's just that little, that little motivation. That's why Jonathan and I do this. Honestly, like that, that is what gets us up in the morning is, is finding that little bit. That's why like some people kind of derisively call us cheerleaders for Phi or, you know, trying to talk about this as, as some kind of religion or life superpower or whatever you want to call it. But I reject that completely. To me, it is this amazing thing that can transform your life. And, and if we sound like cheerleaders a little bit, then so be it. Because I've seen the change in my life. I've seen the change in countless friends' lives. And sometimes it just is 
that community. It is that person just kind of spurring you on and just saying, hey, you can do it. Hey, I'm at a 70% savings rate. And and maybe that compels you to go look at your expenses and maybe cut a couple of things that you were just wasting money on or something, you know, just something silly like that. It's that little motivation. And, and that really does go a long way. So again, Kelsa, thank you so much for being such an important part of our community as, as an admin there. All right. So this next voicemail that I'm going to play is from Jack and Nicholas out of LA. Hey, Brett and Jonathan. It's Nicholas and Jack from LA. Hey guys. As you know, uh, Jack and I stumbled on the path to Fi last year and implemented all the best practices of low spending high savings and index investing. Our partner's ears perked up when we started conversation about taking it to the next level with a side business in rental properties. So the four of us would like to pool our funds to buy a multi-unit out of state and eventually use that to leverage other purchases to grow steady rental income. Our question is how to set up a safe and effective partnership that will protect us as a group as well as individually. Each of us keeps separate finances and will each be contributing the same amount of money toward the initial investment. We're all close friends, so we want a rock-solid formal arrangement that will clearly define expectations and help avoid misunderstandings. We'd love any advice or insight on how to best structure such an agreement and entity for our group. Thanks in advance. I love the question. It's actually well-timed. So Brad and I, if you remember from a previous episode, I told you that in 2018, I was going to try and get our first real estate property. I sandbagged Brad with it on an episode and I convinced him on the episode live where he couldn't get out of it that he was going to do this with me. Frankly, neither of us have any clue what we're doing. Well, Frank, who is a very active member in our Facebook group, he's also listens to every episode. He is super involved in our community. He had actually reached out to us a long time ago saying that he might be interested in doing something similar. So when I mentioned it on the episode, he emailed us again and says, guys, I am in this and I want to be a part of it. And frankly, when you see Frank's resume, you'll be blown away. I mean, the guy might be the smartest guy I've ever met in my entire life. He also happens to be a lawyer and have a pretty significant legal background and be able to add some weight to this exact question that you're asking about. And so all three of us are going to be tiptoeing into the real estate world for the first time this year. And we're going to try to hopefully be able to leverage our network and bring in some other people who might be willing to help us give us some knowledge. But I think what you're asking about is a question that we would absolutely have to figure out as well. And when we do, we'll turn it into a show for you and we'll play it on the podcast. Yeah, I love that, Jonathan. And and yeah, I mean, this is top of mind for us personally. And also we have so many real estate experts in the community, right? We have Scott and Mindy from Bigger Pockets. We have Chad Carson. We have Paul Thompson, who we just met at Camp Fi, who has his own podcast on real estate, which we'll link to in the show notes. And, you know, there are just so many people who want to help. And these questions are important because there are so many people who really do want to get into real estate, but it's these initial hurdles that really trip you up and it might make it so that you don't start. So yeah, I mean, if we can get over the hurdles ourselves and we're going to document them obviously, and we'll do that on the podcast, then anybody out there can do it. And if you have other questions, send them into us, send us a voicemail or send us an email to feedback at choose We will add it to the list and we assuredly will have multiple episodes this year on this real estate adventure that we're going down. All right, guys, I have one more voicemail that I'm going to play for you today, and this is from Rosemary, and she wants to share this secret life hack that she feels like she's been hiding for the last several years, but she wants to get back to the community and share this. I think if you're a teacher or have considered becoming a teacher, you will find this incredibly valuable as you pursue financial independence. Hey, Brad and Jonathan. This is Rosemary Boardman. Jonathan, thanks for the invitation to call in after my posting on your Facebook page. I'm an international teacher. I'm from the U.S. and I've been teaching abroad for, well, five years at this posting. And then I had a prior one where it was uh, just a year. But basically, I, I decided to come abroad because I was teaching in the U.S. and realized that I just didn't have that many options as a single teacher living in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I knew I could make more money by going abroad and that I wanted to have that experience. And since then, I've had the opportunity to do a ton of really great travel. I've been able to afford to do an international adoption with my daughter. And then I purchased two homes in the last two years. 
So now that I've discovered Phi, that's become the focus for me with my savings at this point. So I've always had a pretty good savings rate, but I'm just finding ways to improve that even more. And I feel like for teachers, it's hard to feel like financial independence is is very accessible because typically there's such low salaries in the U.S. And it would be great to be able to let more people know about this opportunity. It's not what people typically think of, which is just teaching English as a foreign language. It's actually using my degree and my license and my teaching experience to be a professional in my field. Brad, I know your brother Scott is also teaching internationally in Chile. We have a lot of kind of conversation back and forth And it's something I want to still continue to figure out how to optimize. I'm not completely sure about the rules around IRAs. I haven't been contributing, but it looks like maybe there's a way to do that. Yeah. So anyway, if you're interested in knowing more, I'd be happy to talk to you. And it'd be fun to do a show with Scott as well. Anyway, that's all. Thanks a lot. I love that, Brad. I think you should ask your brother to come on the show. Yeah, let's do it. Scott, come on on the show. Right? <laughs> Did you just sandbag him? <laughs> well, Jay, you normally sandbag me, so why don't I uh, sandbag my brother, right? Eh? Nice. I'm sure he'll hear this. But yeah, I, Scott, if you want to come on, I think that'd be great. I would love to hear all the little ways that you found to optimize. And some of the immediate perks are increased pay, and then they're covering lodging. So going back to you know, what we talk about with the simple math, if you can get to saving 50% of your income, this game get, looks a lot easier. And if you look at where all your money's going, if most of it is going to living expenses and you figure out a way to live for free, it gets much easier, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And yeah, Rosemary, thank you for the voicemail. And and that's cool that you correspond with my brother, actually. And there's a whole network of, of these international teachers out there who are doing this. And, and like she said, it's, it's not just teaching English. You're not just going somewhere and and teaching English in some night school or something. This is, this is a full-time teaching position. And I know my brother, actually the school that he works at is called Nido. And it's one of, one of, if not the best schools in all of South America. And it's actually taught in English. So he teaches math just like he did here in Virginia, but he teaches math in Santiago, Chile. And I mean, that is really, really cool. And it's just been this amazing adventure for him. He is reaching Phi on this ultra expedited path because he's saving 90% of his income, basically, because his living expenses are free. He pays very minimal tax. And that's actually something we can also talk about. You know, we can certainly have that episode about international teaching. But I think the larger issue, Jonathan, would be for people living abroad generally. And that might be an instance where we can bring on a CPA who has knowledge in those type of pieces of information, like the foreign earned income exclusion. That's something I know very little about. Or like Rosemary said, there might be ways that you can contribute to an IRA or or do other type of interesting planning from a FI perspective that we all just might not know about. And getting all this information, getting these questions out there. Like if you live abroad, if you're a teacher abroad, whatever it may be, send us questions that you have and we can put them together in a list and get that as part of this entire conversation. So I think that will more broadly impact people in the community as opposed to just being this tiny, tiny little sliver of international teachers, which in and of itself is a pretty cool story. But yeah, the more people we can impact positively, the better. All right. Well, I look forward to that episode as well. All right, guys. Well, that's going to go ahead and bring this episode to a close. I do have a couple of big announcements. The first one that I want to make is that for the next week, we are still doing that drawing for a free ticket to Camp Fi Mid-Atlantic. Now, if you haven't already heard about this, Camp Fi is spreading across the country. We did two events down in Florida. There's one in Williamsburg, Virginia. That's the Mid-Atlantic, the one I'm talking about now. And there's still one in the Midwest. All the tickets for Mid-Atlantic have been sold out, but Stephen gave us one free ticket to give away to someone in our community as just a way to give back and say thanks. Uh, This is three nights. All meals are included April 13th through the 16th. It's in Williamsburg, Virginia, completely free, completely free for our community. If you want to put your name in the drawing for that ticket, all you need to do, just go to choose slash iTunes, follow the instructions there and leave us a short written review 
and then send us an email to feedback at choosefi.com, letting us know that you left a review and what screen name you left it under. And then we will announce the winner on February 2nd. Also, during the same period of time, I did go ahead and purchase a couple copies of Vincent's book. I actually purchased five copies of the book, but I'm holding on to one for myself and giving one to Brad. But that means I still have three left. So if you're interested in one of those books, it's the exact same process. Just leave us an iTunes written review and send us an email to feedback at choosefi.com. This is a virtuous circle. You are helping us out by putting your stamp of approval on this show. And we are able to give you either a book so you can suck the knowledge out of the author that's put that information together. Or in this particular case with Camp 5 Mid-Atlantic, you get access to a really cool hangout for three nights. Come hang out with some friends. It's going to be a great time. We'll be there. And uh, Brad, how many winners do we have today? All right, Jonathan, we have one winner today. And the winner is Lee. Okay, and Lee said, I just finished binge listening to the podcast for the last couple of weeks. I'm actually upset that I went through it so fast because now I have to wait for Monday and Friday to listen to the newest show. Brad and Jonathan have such great chemistry and balance each other out very well. I love the fact that they focus so much on actionable tips, which guess what? Actually inspired me to do stuff like change my investments in my 401k to one with a lower expense ratio. It's because of this show that I even know what the expense ratio is. Also, I'd like to point out that when I do have some issues with something stated in the Monday episode, it usually gets addressed in the Friday episode. I don't know if that is just based off the listener's comments or from their own review of the episode, but I think it's great either way. They listen to what the audience has to say and or have enough self-awareness to realize something may not have come across in the way they intended. I've recommended this podcast to friends and family, which I've only done for two other podcasts, and I listen to podcasts every day. If you are at all interested in financial independence, then you should give this podcast a try. You know, one of the things I hope is that when you recommend the Choose If I podcast, you are in no way embarrassed by the content that you're recommending. And what I mean by that is by you being willing to share this podcast with somebody else, it's adding value to their life as well. And they're coming back and saying, thank you. Wow, that was actually really useful and it helped me where I am. It's relatable and it's actionable. And that's the place that Brad and I continually try to position this show to be a travel guide to motivate you on this journey that we're all on. It really is a superpower, my friends. The fire is spreading, and we'll see you next time as we continue to go down the road less traveled. You've been listening to Choose FI Radio Podcast, where we help middle-class America build wealth one life hack at a time.